Hi, Brian. Hi there. Thank you so much, Pam. So um, I'm here and um, I'm hoping that Brian can, is he planning on making you and I I'm a host? host? I'm a host and I just made you a co-host. Okay, good. And then that way there, um, what happens is that it will be saved to my laptop. Awesome. Thank you so much. For some reason I'm not able to do that. I will. Um, I think the recording is in progress already. So it might automatically yeah. even save to Brian's. As I mean, okay. We take minutes, but this also serves as our minutes. So as long as it's recorded and put online, I think we're okay. Yeah, um, yeah, absolutely. So just so you know, open meeting law does not require you to post a video. Okay. It's all you're you're only required to make it available if it's if it's available to us. Okay. Um, and then you have 10 days after the meeting to sort of make that happen. So Okay. We, so we're we essentially have 10 days to figure that out if something screws up. <laughs> Thank you so much. I feel, I feel yeah. like we all need like a training on open meeting law because we used yeah. to do it yeah. over like in person and it just feels, it feels different over Zoom. <laughs> it does. It really oh. does. Yeah. I, personally, I like it. You know, it's like, it makes life a lot easier to have it recorded for me in my meetings. We do the board of registrars because then I can just watch the video and I don't have to be so concerned about what did somebody say, um, you know, so that I capture their, their thoughts real time, I can go back and look at the video and just concentrate on what they're saying. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you getting used to this uh, daylight savings time? Oh my goodness. I really struggled. Um, I really struggled uh, yesterday, to be yeah. honest. Um, but I don't know. I'm not so thrilled about how dark it is, but, uh, <laughs> trying to like be active. Yeah. We got out of work yesterday at four 30 and it was already dark out and I was just not, I was not loving it at all. So, um, yeah, I, uh, it's not great. <laughs> it's not great. Um, I am, I'm trying to start it earlier, like start my day earlier. Like when it's light, I just get up and get out of bed yeah. and, uh, I start yeah. work. I get to, for my day job, I have a little bit of a, I kind of make, I don't make my own hours, but as I'm, my work is project-based. So as long as mm -hmm. I get my meetings done and I get my work done, whether it's 8 AM to 5 PM or 7 AM mm -hmm. to 4 PM doesn't really make too much of a difference. So yeah, yeah. trying to start early. Well, while well, I can <laughs> before that, it gets too cold to get. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um, how are you doing? I can't complain. It's really, you know, just uh crazy after the elections. Um, but they're done now. And I'm just waiting to sort of figure out um, you know, I have to hear back from uh, the folks who live overseas or are visiting overseas and may have voted um, because they have until this coming Friday to get their ballots back to us mm. as long as they're postmarked by the election day. So we're just in the hold pattern so that I can finalize our election results. Mm. But it seems pretty cool though. We got a, a one um, one person's ballot came back from Germany today. That's Another exciting. came back from Ireland. So it seems like, you know, our Northampton residents are speaking out even when they're traveling. So that's, that's pretty great. Good. Yeah. That's that's really wonderful to, to hear. Yeah. I appreciate that people mm -hmm. are writing in million. I felt so guilty this time around. I, uh, 
I did vote, but I, vo I voted on election day and I had been doing okay. early voting for so long. I was like, oh no, I didn't get to early voting. I was so, it, it early voting is great because it really forces you to go on election day if, you know, yeah, you yeah. Have, you're not gonna yeah. miss it, you know? So I was really yeah. glad that I. Absolutely. Well, the, the, um, the good news is, is that they're gonna make early voting um, permanent for us that people are going to be allowed to early vote from here on out. Um, I, it's up to the city council whether or not they want to do in-person early voting, which I mm -hmm. hope they do. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, uh, at least if you can't early vote in person, you could do it by mail. So mm -hmm. there's always that opportunity, too. You know, if you're if before we had early voting, you could only uh, vote absentee if you had an excuse. Um, mm -hmm. But this sort of alleviates any pressures for people to have to go to the polls. And I really think it's a good thing. Mm -hmm. I really do. So I I'm agree. excited about it. I agree 100%. <laughs> um. So I don't, I'm not sure how many people are actually on the Arts Council? Good question. Um, so on our municipal board, we are down to six. Okay. Um, we had two resignations recently. Mm -hmm. And we just have had a lot of turnover because some people have moved, some people have dropped off. Yeah. Uh, yeah, two of our active members moved recently. It's so unfortunate that it's people like you have to be you're you have to live here because there's so mm -hmm. many people who work here that I think would love to join, but um, mm. that requirement is I think really limits us a bit. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Um, but yeah, well, so we have six on the municipal, and then we have another set of folks who are on our ink board which is the, um, the, it's separate from the municipal, but we do have Northampton Arts Inc. and they mm -hmm. support some of the work and, and you don't have to be zip coded in Northampton to be a part of that. So we have other members who are involved in that. They don't come to all of our meetings. They kind of just weigh in um, as needed. Is that, is that more like a regional board, like different areas or, or is it only Northampton focused? The ink. It's still, it's still Northampton focused, and it's people who are like engaged in arts and culture here. Mm -hmm. um, and usually it's people who have been on our municipal board, but they moved oh. and they're familiar with the work we do, oh, but they live okay. in Greenfield now or they live in Long Meadow now and still want to support and be active or work in the area, but don't have the zip code for the requirement. So, um, and and uh, are you guys get, are we doing first night this year? What's the plan? Yeah, yeah. first yeah. night is oh, happening. Awesome. Um, I think like the sponsorships have been rolling in. Um, mm. What else? Um, we've got a, quite a few number bands that are performing and, and buttons are coming out. Oh, Brian is great. on on leave, um, mm. but he should. I think he's going to be back in the office for first night to run that. But while he's out, we have an amazing uh, person who's doing our marketing, uh, Kate Simpson. Mm -hmm. She works for um, Signature Sounds and lots of music venues. Has worked for lots of music venues in the area, so she's running the marketing while Brian is out, so that at least that's great. Find out about yeah. So I'll, I can link to the. Uh, yeah website i think the look they got a new logo this year um oh, it's great i always love the um the flyers that come out and one we of the, the very them. first ones that brian did when he took over as the director was that he um he had a few flyers made up that didn't have any um wording on them so the sponsors weren't on there it was just the picture and I have one of those I'm he said that there's only you know a handful of those out I'm so excited I still have it it's awesome yeah um our we have some awesome graphic designers that we work with and Brian does a really good job of working with a, a lot of different designers and then going back to them for different projects so we get 
-hmm. a nice variety. Mm -hmm. Um, we do need volunteers for first night. So I'm going to, I have to remember to announce that, uh, during the meeting. Oh, that's awesome. But the, did you see the poster for this year? I had it. I didn't No. Oh, so here, I'll just share my screen really quickly so you can see. But oh, this, this oh I love great? it. I and it came love from it. Michael Kriegler. And that's, he's yeah. an artist and a musician. And I love that, you know, we, we support so artists so when we. Um, it, so yeah. it has such an intricate design on it. And then it's, uh, the, is it, they're doves, I assume, right? Are those yeah, doves? I think, I think they're doves. Yeah, yeah, certainly looks it. Great, it's nice. that's awesome. You know, I, I yeah, buy my, I'm excited. Yeah, I buy my buttons at Cooper's. I love, love going awesome. in there. That's awesome, do you live in Florence? Buttons. Yeah, yeah. Do you live in Florence? Oh, yeah. It's great, and I love that Florence is doing so much with Arts Night Out, and there's such a great arts community in Florence as yeah. well. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I think okay. I think we owe a lot of that to Donna Bell Casas, right? Because she ah. she is the one that uh, started it all here for us, at least while I've lived here. You know, ah. so she's great. great. She's super active, and and I love she's an artist, and she's also a producer. You know, she makes these arts events happen as well as, um, you know, that's just, wonderful making art in a studio. She really works to bring them out into the community. Mm -hmm. um, okay, I am pulling up all of my documents for this meeting, which tends to be a little bit- yeah, Let me you give you a few on. minutes to, to prep yourself and- Oh, okay. thank I'll, you. I'll come thank back you, if you need anything. Okay, thank you.
Hi, Kathy. Oh, you're on mute, Kathy. Kathy, I think you're on mute. I don't know if I, if you can unmute yourself. I did. Oh yeah. Yeah. No, I didn't know I had had other meetings and I just automatically left me on mute. Oh, no worries. How are you? I'm okay. I had a little health scare, but it's resolved. Okay. Good. Of course we all health stuff. I'm who am I talking to? So, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm glad you're well. I'm glad you're well. Yeah. Thank you for asking. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Hey, Pam. Great. You know, we have our special guest. We're honored with our city clerk here. <laughs> uh, she's the best. I Hi, know. Kathy. Hi. How was your day go today? Oh my God. I'm such a, I must have vaccinated 70 people. You know, I was the only one volunteering. I mean, as a volunteer, I mean, all oh, the nurses are great, but I yeah. to God, we had 86 people and I swear I must have done 70 of them. But it was great. Wow. It's the best thing I do. Is it brings me such great joy. That's great. Thank you for doing that. I got my shot today. I did the J and J. I know you did. I wasn't yeah. going to say anything because we have to follow, you know, confidentiality. Yep. Yep. I know <laughs> yep. I saw you. Yeah, that yep. was great. Absolutely. Yep. Got to do my part to keep the community safe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, it was also, you know, for me as a nurse, it's like being with, you know, cause I do, you do still health teaching and talking about the vaccine, but you know, it's like being close and, and, you know, I really, I try to connect and get eye contact and, you know, even rolling the sleeve, I help them pull the sleeve down, but it's all those little hands-on kind of caring touches that that's why I'm a nurse, you know? So it was yeah, like really absolutely. Lovely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm going to put myself on mute and let you guys have your meeting. Oh, thanks, Pam. Thank you so much, Pam. Yeah. How are you doing, Danielle? I am okay. Mm -hmm. um, I am trying to keep things as high functioning as possible oh. with... Brian out. So yeah. tell me, did they have a baby or what? I knew nothing if that's the truth. Yes. Yes. They no, Sebastian. Uh, Sebastian is here. Oh, good. Um, I think he is a little, he's going to be two weeks old on oh, Friday. So he came nothing. just before Halloween. Oh my gosh. Okay. Um, which was uh which was two weeks early, I believe. Okay. Okay. Wow. Um, okay. Great. But he's he's beautiful. He have you seen him happy and healthy? Well, not in person. I've only been fortunate enough to see pictures because Brian is still checking his email periodically and on text. Oh, good. Oh, so. good. good, good, good. Um, okay. All right. Oh my God. And I need, I have, I think I have their address, but I, I want us to send them something. I, I completely, I missed the, you know, because the, it was the jazz festival mm -hmm. that weekend when they had their little shower thing and I completely missed it. So, and I don't know Allie's you know, her last name and, and so. I can email, I can, that'd email be great. You. If you could do that for me, I, I think, I think I had remembered the, because he, his um, address is, you know, and I know West Hampton, a little bit on West Hampton. So yep. I can email you um, both the, like, like her full name and they had an Amazon wish list for oh, good. items. And that, if you did that, it would automatically ship to them. Okay. But I'd love to write him a little personal card. Yeah. I mean, I'd, yeah, I'd yeah. like to do that. Yeah, of course. I have, yeah, I have mine too. I think they're going to be doing a meal train soon. So I'll, I'll email that around to okay. everyone. Great. Thanks. Um, oh my God. I feel so bad. I completely missed it. No, it's, I mean, I don't think we, we haven't had a meeting. We haven't, this oh, is the so first. He didn't send out. Nobody sent anything out. I didn't know. Oh, we haven't sent anything out yet. Um, okay. wow. but, um, big changes, a house and a baby. I know. And daylight savings. <laughs> oh my God. You're right. You <laughs> It's so funny because usually I have some of the people I used to work with and support, you know, people with intellectual disabilities. I must, I used to get like, I mean, five or six calls from people. Don't forget to turn your clocks back. You know, it's so great. Yeah. And I well, have nobody now. So, <laughs> I mean, I did have people, but he couldn't, my friend Bruce didn't remember. So, but anyway. Uh. Um. Yeah. Hi, Eamon. Hi, Jesse. Mm. Hello. Hey there. Hi. Hi. 
And I may go on mute from time because my dog is here and, he, and who knows how he will act, so. Okay, thanks. Danielle, do you have a um, Google Doc started for uh, the writing of questions or should I start one? Nope, I have one, I emailed it and I can also, I will uh, chat it directly to you as well. Um, okay, yeah, I, I didn't have a chance to take a look at my email before. Uh, um, yep. We're logging on. I just got home. <sighs> I will chat that directly to you. And I will also make you a co-host so that you can share your screen when the time comes. Sounds good, thank you. Yeah, of course. Um, I know, I'm not sure if Kent is gonna be able to join us tonight. Um, I'm not, has anyone heard? I'm sure Tulani will call in if she's able. Has anyone heard? No, about that? Okay. And our public comment technically begins at 7.30. And I, I know that was part of the agenda. So it could be that people just join a little bit later. It looks like we do have some folks on the call already for public comment, but um, I, I expect that some might just tune in at 7.30 instead of, um, joining at seven to hear all of our arts companies. Hi, Tulani. Um, for anyone who does not yet know, Brian is out on parental leave. Baby Sebastian is here, so he will not be joining us tonight. We do have um, Pam Powers, who's the city clerk, who is on the call, or she's not actively on the call at the moment, but but you see her name and she's helping um, me get the recording and, and the agendas online and stuff since we have a little bit of an administrative vacuum in, in Brian's um, absence. So I think that most of us are here. Um, I will... Does anyone, I will, I will open to, I will make a motion to open the, the municipal meeting. Second. Okay, all in favor? Okay, so let the minutes show that it is 7.05 and the meeting is open. <laughs> Thank you, Kathy. Um, I, we've been going back and forth on email to make sure that when we open meetings, we announce the time so that it's easier for the minutes. Um, Thank you everyone for being here. Um, this is the November 9th meeting of the Northampton Arts Council pursuant to Mayor Narkowitz's stay at home order, which I think is no longer in effect, uh, but the changes have been permitted that we are allowed to meet on Zoom um, thanks to amendments to open meeting law. So we are here on Zoom. Our meeting is open. Before we move into our top agenda items, since we do have some new guests, I am gonna make a habit of reading our meeting norms. Um, so I will read them out. I am putting the link to those norms in the chat in case anyone would like to follow along. If anyone has questions on those norms, feel free to ask those questions in the chat. Um, and these are, these are meeting norms that our council has voted on and approved and we, they're guidelines. Um, we're not going to kick you out if you don't follow them, but we strongly ask you to follow them um, because they make for what we believe to be the, the best conversation and meeting possible. So thank you all for being here. Our first norm is that we use I statements, and that means that we speak from our own personal experiences and perspectives and are careful not to speak for any other individual or group. We assume good intentions, which means that we're going to recognize our own personal privileges and biases. We call in, not out. 
And that means it's fine to point out the problems um, that we need to point out. That's okay, we encourage that, but we wanna do so in ways that empower people to be part of the solution. We wanna recognize intention versus impact. So you may not intend to do harm with your words, but if you do, it's really important to apologize and accept responsibility and uh, do better. Also in this document, we link to a how to apologize uh, framework, which I'm gonna talk a little bit more about at length later, but it is important to acknowledge um, the difference between impact and intention. We wanna lean into discomfort and acknowledge that hurt feelings and discomfort are opportunities for growth. We respect people's pronouns and gender identities. They see that some folks have their pronouns listed in their Zoom names. If you feel comfortable and want to, I encourage you to add your pronouns um, there and be respectful of other folks' pronouns. Uh, story stay lessons leave. This is not uh, really pertinent to this public recorded meeting, but when we are in working groups, when we're working with sensitive information, um, we try to make sure that the lessons from those, those conversations leave the meeting and, and come with us, but we don't disclose people's personal information. We want to stay open to feedback. That means when you are called in, you want to consider that a gift and be thankful and appreciative and see it as a learning opportunity. We want to be mindful of airtime, which means that if you've spoken a lot, you want to make sure to create space for others and be mindful of any privileged identities you hold that make it easier for you to take up space in a meeting and might make it difficult for others to take up space in a meeting. Finally, we wanna set clear boundaries and consequences as a team. All of us here are responsible for creating the culture of our council. We're all here responsible for the culture of this meeting and whether it, we all leave feeling good or we all leave feeling crummy. So let's just keep that in mind as we, as we move forward. So those are our meeting norms. Okay, and the first item on the agenda is to um, work on our minutes. I believe we do have a quorum here. Um, the only one who's not here is Kent. I did have an amendment to the minutes. Has anyone else, have, have folks had a chance on the council to review the minutes that were sent out? Yes. Okay. Um, so I had, I would like to propose an amendment, which Kathy, I did email you about, um, Ya Ping's last name is Douglas. So you can definitely include, uh, that there. I sent you the, the spelling, um, of her name and I, I sent a long, an, a modification regarding a response that I made to, um, I believe Ellen Coteen's comment in the last meeting, which I think there, it could have been a typo, but I did send along a correction. Did anyone else have any edits to make to the minutes? Okay, so with those noted changes, I'd like to move to approve the minutes. Second. All in favor? Amen. Okay, great, all in favor. So thank you. Minutes are approved. The next item on our agenda is to review our grant scoring criteria for the um, fall LCC grant round. So I'm going to put that in the chat in case folks who are here just want to take a look. Um, these criteria were so. I'm gonna give a little context. So every uh, season, the Northampton Arts Council hosts a, um, a grant round and we set our criteria according to which we evaluate the grants and proposals that come in. So uh, the grants committee, which was comprised of myself, Rachel Hart and Freeman Stein have been working on this grant criteria for a few years. Um, we consulted with folks on the equity committee to think about how we might uh, incorporate anti-racist practice into this grant criteria. And Kent um, Alexander, who's a, a member of the council and does grant and foundation work in the area and is also an anti-racist practitioner and an equity facilitator, um, did take a look and make some suggestions to this document. This is not permanent. This is a working document. It's meant to grow and change and evolve with every grant round. Um, but 
we put forth this proposal to be our grant criteria that we will use to score this fall's um, applications, which we will be reviewing in December. They've already been submitted. So um, has everyone on the council had a chance to review the grant criteria? Or if not, I can give a top line summary of the changes that have been proposed. Danielle, if you don't mind doing that, I think that would be helpful for me. I remember reading through um, them a while back, but I don't know if I have uh, gone over the most recent um, changes. Sure. Um, so in years past, the grant criteria that we used internally is an internal rubric that we used to score applications was artistic merit on a scale of zero to seven, community impact on a scale of zero to three, and project feasibility on a scale of zero to three. Those historically were the, the criteria that we used to review uh, grant applications. So any artists on the call, if you would have, if you've previously submit a grant application, we would have given you one of these three scores and then tallied them up at the end. And whoever got the most points would, would be, you know, receiving grant funds and would be proportionate to the request. So uh, the grants committee did some research, some thinking and proposes that we change those criteria to add another bucket. Historically, the community impact bucket, which had been a zero to three scale was the catch-all bucket for access, inclusion. Uh, and, and by that, I mean things that had to do with, with equity all around. So uh, is the facility where you're hosting your arts event wheelchair accessible? Uh, are there sliding scale tickets? Are there translations available? Is this something that's accessible by public transport, uh, et cetera? Uh, and because we were using community impact in such a broad way, we decided it would make sense to create a third category actually for accessibility and inclusion, leaving community impact to be a little bit more about uh, individual impact, audience impact. So the new proposal is that artistic merit will remain on a score of zero to seven. Um, accessibility and inclusion gets a, a bucket of zero to five. Community impact gets a score of zero to five and project feasibility remains at zero to three. And for anyone who's curious, project feasibility is usually um, is, is the bucket that we use to evaluate whether something seems to have the right staffing, funding, uh, production behind it to be able to be executed. Any questions? Thanks, I appreciate that. Okay, any questions on the new criteria proposed for fall or amendments that folks would like to make? Kent is not here, but he did make some, some edits and suggestions to this document. Okay, so I will make a motion to approve our new grant scoring criteria. Would anyone like to second that motion? I will second that motion. All in favor? Okay, so we're all in favor. Okay, that passes. So this is the grant criteria that we will be using for the next grant round. Up next, we have a first night update. Um, for anyone who doesn't know or came on late, our executive director is on parental leave. So we're very happy for him. And um, also first night is our biggest and most important event that we do to raise funds for um, arts programming and arts education in the city. So because he is on leave, uh, we have a phenomenal uh, marketing support person who has come in to make sure that the word gets out about first night. Katie Simpson is, is supporting that work. 
she's done great work on social media already. I'm sure you've seen lots of uh, first night ads and images online. So be sure to like them and comment on them to boost, uh, to boost those efforts. And I will share that um, we do need volunteers for first night. And I'm gonna share the link to the volunteer form in the chat and ask that um, anyone on the call who wants to signs up to volunteer. Uh, board members do historically volunteer. So if you're in town and have the capacity, I would encourage you to sign up for a slot. And if not, that's okay. Um, I would ask you to please share this with your networks so that um, we can be as well staffed as possible for, for first night. And this is gonna be our first first night back in action since before the pandemic. So um, I think the more help we can we can get, the better. Does anyone have anything to add for first night or any questions? Okay. So uh, I am now going to provide an update on the biennial and where the council's work has been sitting in regards to the biennial. We originally planned to come to this meeting with an apology. And we originally, well, originally we still are using a document called How to Give a Genuine Apology, which Kent Alexander, who's a, a council member and also an equity facilitator, um, shared with us as a framework and a method for how to actually give a genuine apology. So our council has been doing having working group meetings, our equity committee, various members have been invited to attend those working group meetings to think about the impact of every decision that has been made regarding the biennial. And just to give folks a primer, um, Programs that the Northampton Arts Council puts on are done in subcommittees. So there was a biennial subcommittee that produced the biennial. Uh, none of the current municipal board members were on that subcommittee. We had Ellen, who's on the call, one of our volunteers, was the lead producer of that event. So there were, week, there were monthly board meetings in which status updates were provided. That said, our council members who are currently kind of answering for the decision to cancel the biennial, needed to acquaint ourselves with the processes of the biennial. So we have been doing an audit and an assessment of the process behind the biennial around what happened when indigenous artists raised concerns about the artworks that were on view, around the jury process, around the jury selection process. We've been auditing all of that. And that's why it's been taking us some time to come up with a response. And we've assessed or we've been doing an assessment of impact on every level. So from the, the day that we decided we were gonna do a, a 2021 biennial to the moment that the show got canceled and actually even beyond that, we've been looking at the way our communications have had impact on the community. And in assessing our impact, we then are able to come up with places that we need to apologize and hold ourselves accountable for impacts that we have had. Now, we're not issuing an apology tonight. I know it's a horrible long teaser because part of what it means for us to give an authentic and genuine apology is actually to provide clear next steps for what we're gonna do as a council to redress any harm that was done and make changes to our work in the future. And that is where our work is right now. We've been assessing impact and we've been thinking about ways forward. And as we think about ways forward, we, we are still in listening mode. We still are listening to the community. Um, we're, we're getting, um, we're reading all of the emails that have come through. We have like a doc where all of our emails that folks have sent us are, are shared in a Google doc that we all look at. Um, we have been doing independent reading so as a council, we've spent some time with Robin D'Angelo's on accountability. Um, this is a, a text that we're using to guide some of our thinking. Um, and we are also, um, we're meeting with one another to, to think about how we need to change our processes. And until we can really have extensive conversations with one another about that work, 
if we put forward an apology, it's not going to mean much to any of you. It's not going to mean much to BIPOC artists that felt harm. It's not going to mean much to the artists whose work was not shown in the biennial. It's not going to mean much to um, folks who just wanted to attend. So we want to make sure that what we say next actually has meaning. And we're being really slow and intentional about the process. Um, it's not, I'm sorry, it's not a quicker process, but that's part of the reason that we had problems in the first place, right? So we're really being intentional, we're slowing things down, and we're confident that by following this process, we're going to be able to produce the best possible arts programming for our community that we can. Um, our, we love arts and culture, we love artists, that's why we volunteer on this board, and we want to do justice to our community. We want to do justice to artists here. And we want to make sure that we are the most welcoming and accessible um, community that we can be for artists and arts programming. And that's why we're being slow and intentional about the work. So um, I'd like to open it up to other council members to share anything I might've missed about what we've been working on, where we are and where we're going. And then um, once we hear from my, my fellow council members, we will open up to public comment and I'll share more about that process. One thing I'll just add or maybe reiterate if you already said this, Danielle, is that we at all of our monthly meetings welcome public comment and we would really appreciate if community members continue to come and give input as we're going through this process that Danielle described, because that will be very helpful to us. Tulani, Jesse, Eamon, do you have anything to add? Uh, I don't really have anything much to add, Danielle. I thought you did a um, fabulous job of kind of summation of where we're at. Um, I, part of me wants to say all of the other resources that we've kind of looked at, um, but I also think that that's not necessary to do because as you said, we are uh, having a lot of conversations internally to try to get us to the best place that we can be in order to be um, truly um, transparent about how we're going to be moving forward and how we have gotten here. So um, thank you for thank you for doing a uh, a plus job in summation. And um, I look forward to hearing um, public comment this evening so that we can uh, continue moving, um, moving forward with uh, having a, the best um, ear possible towards what uh, our community is um, talking to us about. Thank you. Thanks, Tulani. <laughs> See you. Um, I added a link to our equity statement in the chat as well for folks that aren't familiar with it. Um, I might, I'm gonna read it out actually as well. This is a statement that was uh, approved by the council in, uh, I believe it might've been, I thought it was um, 2019, but it might've been early 2020. And um, it really does guide our work. So I'll share that. The Northampton Arts Council believes that art is for everyone. We strive to produce support and sustain arts and cultural initiatives that hold up all people, including but not limited to those who have been historically marginalized based on race, ethnicity, age, disability, sexual orientation, gender identity, neurodiversity, socioeconomic status, geography, citizenship status, or religion. We affirm the need to redress historical inequities in the arts and cultural sector 
and commit to supporting equitable and inclusive practices through all aspects of our work. Um, we all voted on that. So I know we have some new members that weren't actually part of that writing process, but the council at the time did write and, and vote and approve that statement and it guides our work. Um, the only other thing I'll add is that the conversations that we have been having as a council mirror the dialogue I've seen happen in the community. And I think mirror them in productive ways. Um, we have representatives on the council who voted yes, no, and abstained. So we are having rich conversations. Our, our meetings are not an echo chamber. Um, and I think it's telling that our council conversations are mirroring the community conversations are also mirroring national conversations. Um, so we're not alone in this uh, conundrum. We're not alone in the struggle to make arts more equitable. Um, and we're not gonna do everything right. The reason we're not gonna do everything right is because it hasn't been done before. It's supposed to be messy. If it wasn't messy and it wasn't hard, we wouldn't be doing it right. If we did it exactly the same way we've done everything else, then it wouldn't be anti-racist. It wouldn't be justice work. It wouldn't be work for equity. So I thank everyone for, for your patience. I thank you for your, your kindness um, and your willingness to, to do this work with us because um, it's thought work and it's hard. Um, and, and I'm grateful for everyone who's, who's on the call. So I'm gonna stop talking because as I said, we're in listening mode. Um, we are going to open for public comment. Um, the way it's going to work is that actually, Jesse, we're, we are just listening tonight. Um, if you have questions, Jesse is going to be our scribe and is going to type your questions into a doc that we are then going to bring back into our working group meetings and use in our, in our apology drafting and in our next steps planning sessions. Um, and Jesse's going to share screen so that folks can follow along. You can see questions that have already been asked. Um, you can amplify them. You can say, I like number one. I like number two. You can restate them however you want. Um, we are giving each person two minutes for public comment. We're going to go till nine o'clock. So if folks have already spoken and you want to speak again, you can. Um, but we are going to start with two minutes per person to make sure that everyone has um, a chance to speak. Okay. So if you would like to comment, please raise your Zoom hand and I will then request to unmute you. Okay, I see Dan. All right, hi everybody, I'll keep this really brief. Um, the first thing I wanna do is thank you all for being involved in this process. It's often a thankless process, um, but it does require a lot of labor, both time, mental labor, emotional labor, and all of those things, and doing it is really important. Um, I looked at the, um, the criteria that you have, and I think it's actually really great to see you operationalizing what you're doing and finding ways to make what are ostensibly very abstract values um, into something concrete and measurable, um, which is always a difficult endeavor. I really appreciate you trying to do that. A lot of this brings me back to sort of um, uh, Nishi's writing for the other or writing the other. Um, in terms of how do you convey art um, that is not necessarily your story? Um, and how do you do that in respectful and meaningful ways? And how can a council um, or any body really help artists to go through that process? Um, and so I really look forward to seeing what you're doing and thank you all for your time and your service. Thank you, Dan. Uh, Jeremy, I have asked you to unmute.
Jeremy, I'm not sure if you're talking. Uh, Jeremy, I've asked you to unmute, so you're going to have to accept. Um, okay, I'm not sure we're having an issue with connectivity here for Jeremy. Um, if anyone else would like to to comment, Jeremy, I will come back to you. Okay, Ellen, I've asked you to unmute. First, um, what I have to say, what I wanna read is a, just a bit over three minutes long. I also wanna, um, it was good to hear you speaking tonight about what's happening at, you know, at the committee, I was glad to hear that. Um, I'm gonna add this. Um, first, for those of you who don't know me, um, my name is Ellen Algarten. I've been an active member of the Northampton Arts Council for 15 years, and I've been actively involved and invested in all eight biennials. My tenure as a voting member expired in June 2020, but I plan to stay on as a non-voting member through the biennial, essentially a volunteer. Um, this is really timely. The Mass Cultural Council launched their comprehensive racial equity plan last week, and I'm gonna put the link in here um, for you guys to have it. And I'm also, I'm also including here Um, this is the, the statistics from the biennial, how many, um, um, the except for the accepted poets and visual arts, how many people, let's see, um, you know, identified as from a marginalized group. And then, and then there's the list of the poets and the visual artists who I, I think deserve to be acknowledged. Um, the September 28th meeting when the biennial was canceled was the first time I heard that there were concerns about the biennial process. No one over the months of our planning raised their concerns directly to us. A member of the equity committee was present for most of our subcommittee meetings, never expressed concern. We brought our updates to board meetings, though twice discussions about Northampton Abolish Now preempted our regular business. And I saw this clearly as lacking in due diligence. And, and we were working against a deadline then. I'm concerned about the direction NAC is going in. Um, I think that COVID and Zoom meetings contribute a significant amount to the increasing polarization among our Arts Council members. We had a number of new members join over the past two years, but have had no opportunity for a casual chat time before or after meetings to get to know each other. Our council meetings used to be enjoyable and recently have they, been, they have been painful, well, at least to some of us. Um, we badly need new board members. I'm sure all of you agree with that. And it's a golden opportunity for people who wanna be involved in the arts in our community to apply. At the September 28th meeting, I failed to make a convincing argument to continue the biennial as planned. And though concerns about a flawed process were never clearly expressed, did they warrant canceling the biennial a few days before the exhibit was to be installed? And could it only be addressed by canceling? Well, I think you all know my answer here. I also wished, wished I had asked our director to help us think through the impact of what a last minute cancellation would be on the community and, in the, and for the 60 artists and poets. We started working on biennial 2021 in October, 2020. We put in a full year, yet no one from the Arts Council acknowledged or thanked us for our months of work that the biennial committee, our poet laureate, Karen Schofield, or Faith Kaufman, art department head at Forbes Library had put in. And that's just plain rude and lacking in any show of compassion 
on the part of the Arts Council. And referencing a derogatory comment previously made, some of you will become old white men and old white women and will experience the downward curve of becoming invisible and disregarded as your hair grows gray and white. I wish the Arts Council well, hope once the growing pains are over, it returns to an arts entity for the benefit of all with the focus on art. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. Would anyone else like to comment? Jeremy, I'm not sure if you're still trying to speak. Okay, Doris. Uh, Doris, I've uh, asked you to unmute, so you're gonna have to click accept. Okay. There you go. Okay, I I um hadn't prepared um very much. I thought there'd be more people commenting. Um there's not a lot to say um because you're still in process, but I really feel that it's important for the whole community to see what your process is and have it presented in a way that we can ask questions, receive comments, read your documents, read the kind of research you did. I, I really feel that the whole community needs to be part of this conversation. If if you know Northampton's going to retain its um, leadership in the arts, it, people have looked to Northampton, and this is really um, an awful thing that's happened. Um, so I think we all need to be part of the conversation. Um, it this has been a extremely difficult process for me, and I've talked to many many people. Um, and what I feel now is, and, and you know, similar to what um, Ellen says that we'll all be old and gray, but we are a predominantly white community. And it's very important not to silence white people not to uh, remove us from the conversation. And I had somebody, uh, African-American woman last week in a program that she was presenting telling those of us in the conversation um, for us to use our white privilege use our white privilege to do good work in our communities because we are in this together. And I just felt um, like I was thrown under the bus. So um, that's really all I have to say. And I hope this doesn't drag on and on and on forever. I know you have a lot of work, but um, this needs to get uh, resolved before it gets uglier. Thank you, Doris. Um, we, so, so the role of the council tonight is active listening. Um, and I also just wanted to share the two documents that I referenced earlier in the chat in case anyone missed them. We are 
using this how to give a genuine apology framework, which is used in by equity facilitators to, to think through what apology looks like, what accountability looks like. And we are using Robin D'Angelo's writing on accountability. Um, there are many other documents that we have read, articles that we've read provided by uh, mainly Kent Alexander, who's on, on the call right now. He's an equity facilitator and a member of the council. Um, we've also all read MCC's um, anti-racism action plan, which which Mina sent over the other day. It was passed on Friday and Ellen referenced it as well. Um, and I can put that in the chat in case anyone wants to look at that, um, look at that as well. And I can also put in um, the uh, Declaration of Indigenous Rights, which is a, a document that we shared at the last meeting, but uh, I'll be sure to include those in the chat as well. Um, thank you, Doris. Are there any other comments and this could be questions too we are tracking uh questions in this in the stock as well okay i see bill i'm going to ask you to unmute i don't know whether you can see me we can i'm going <laughs> We can see and, and gonna, hear you. I'm going to try to just put my thoughts in the chat, okay? And then they can copy them into the document if they want to. Sure, that works. And I can I can read them out in case um, for accessibility reasons, folks might not be able to um, read the chat. So I'll, I'll read out your comments if that's okay. Bill writes, I think that it's much more important to emphasize the development of a forward-looking plan for outreach, inclusion, and decision-making. There should be less emphasis on apologizing, especially if it entails pointing fingers at subcommittees or specific artists. Thank you, Bill. And that is the, that is the part of the work that we are working on now. That's why there's not an apology yet. It's because we're working on building those frameworks for the forward-thinking aspect. So in case folks missed that update that I provided at the outset, that is, the, that is what we're devising. Thank you for the comment, Bill. Would anyone else like to make a comment or ask a question? Okay, I will read a comment that was submitted by email. This is from Stephen Pedagorski. He says, to the Arts Council, with regard to the recently canceled biennial, I think that if you truly wish to be transparent and accountable, it will be important that you clarify the statements you have made defending your decision to cancel the exhibit. You have stated that, quote, the council did not cancel the biennial to censor the artwork in question, but rather to redress the harm done in the production process of this exhibition and to prevent further harm, end quote. Will you tell us specifically what harm was done in the production process and what future harm you're hoping to prevent? You've also said that the intervention of indigenous artists, quote, brought to the fore the ways in which the entire biennial production process was not aligned with our mission as an arts organization, end quote, and that, quote, the process by which the biennial was produced did not align with our equity statement, end quote. It is my understanding that 33% of the poets selected by the jurors for the biennial were people who identified as being from marginalized groups, and that, 20 and and that approximately 20% of the visual artists selected also identified as being from a marginalized group. The outreach and publicity statements also obviously reached the person you treated as the representative of the indigenous community in the region and also reached BIPOC artists he brought with him to the September 28th meeting. 
Will you explain how and why those results indicate that the process by which the by which the biennial was produced was faulty or does not align with your mission or equity statements? Sincerely, Steve Pedagorski. And I can send that over to you, Jesse, so you don't have to tra transcribe it. Okay. We are open for public comment and questions for anyone who just joined. If you would like to make a comment or ask a question, please do raise your Zoom hand. Um, or if you are having a hard time raising your Zoom hand, you can type into the chat. Um, and for the purpose of the minutes, if you don't have your name in your Zoom handle, would you please let us know, either change your name so that we can have a name for the minutes or put your name in the chat. And so iPad six and phone number 413-219-5537, if you wouldn't mind either putting your name in the chat or um, changing your Zoom name, that would really help us for the minutes. Kathy, for the minutes, I'm seeing that the phone number actually is Tulani. Great. Jeremy, I'm not sure if you still wanted to comment or ask a question, but we can try to unmute you if you would like. For anyone who recently joined, we are in the public comment period of the Northampton Arts Council meeting. If you have questions or comments or concerns regarding the biennial or, or anything that we've discussed tonight or any of our work, it doesn't have to be related to the biennial. If you have other thoughts and ideas, it's public comment. You can, un, you can raise your Zoom hand and, and let us know. So, so Jeremy um, writes this question in the chat and says, sorry for having difficulties. It's all good. Thank you for, for bearing with us and being on the call tonight. Jeremy writes one question. How did you decide on Robin D'Angelo as someone whose work was good to consult with? And have you given consideration to other progressive voices that differ from and have taken issue with some of her approaches to these issues? Thank you for the question. Um, I don't know if anyone on the council wants to speak to that. It's not directly pertaining to biennial work, but it is more about the process that I shared um, earlier. If anyone wants to share um, anything about the, the choice to use Robin D'Angelo. 
feel free. Um, I can just some, uh, briefly say, um, Jeremy, the Robin D'Angelo um, accountability um, that is from her website was uh, directly recommended as something that um, Kent Alexander um, said that we should be looking at uh, when um, dealing with accountability around um, what we're talking about around racial issues, around disparity issues, around uh, inclusion issues. Um, there's a lot I know about uh, uh, on both sides of the positive and negative for how Robin D'Angelo has been um, presenting her work, but uh, in her direct accountability statement, that is something that she addresses directly and as uh, somebody who has been uh, through a lot of questions about who she is and what she's talking about, um, I don't want to presume to know exactly why Kent uh, addressed it to us um, or shared this link with us, but one of the things that he did point out was that it was um, a good one to be um, looking at and referencing when dealing with accountability issues from a majority white um, uh, group, namely uh, the Arts Council. Thank you, Jesse. And it is not the only text that we're, we're using. It is one of a slate. Doris, I can't tell if you re-raised your hand or if it has been up this whole time. If you've re-raised, I'm gonna just, I'm asking to unmute you, so you just click. Yeah, off. no, um, I, I guess you're not answering questions, but I'm wondering if you consulted with the Mass Cultural Council on this. And maybe, maybe you can't answer it, but I'm just, I'm curious. Well, I've, I've said this in the previous meeting, so I'll, I'll just respond. Uh, Mina Kim was actually at the meeting unrela uh, unrelatedly, just happened to be sitting in on the September 28th meeting. So she, I think she kind of was inadvertently um, dragged into the situation. None of us knew what we were getting into on September 28th, um, but uh, she was there, she saw what happened. And, and Brian and I have, Brian is um, our executive director, have had a series of email correspondences with Mina, just like asking for advice. Um, there have been a number of, of issues pertaining to equity and anti-racism on the council since I joined uh, just, just two years ago. And I've personally have asked um, for support from the MCC for how to help our board navigate some of the issues. I'm not an equity facilitator. I'm white, right? They're, these are not uh, things that are part of my every, this, this experience is not part of my everyday experience. And I'm seeing that there's trouble. And as a chair, I'm trying to find ways to help us navigate. So I've requested support from MCC um, when Michael Bobbitt came and toured Northampton. Um, that was when he and his team gave a teaser for the um, anti-racism action plan. Mina did follow up to share that and she shared some guiding questions um, and, and feedback with me as I tried to figure out what process, what the process was moving forward. Um, she hasn't, MCC has not like endorsed or um, uh, criticized any of our actions. They've really just been a sounding board for us and provided resources, tools, and frameworks to support our work. So I don't want to be misleading about the, the relationship there, but they've really just um, provided a, a wealth of uh, wonderful questions that we've been using to ask ourselves. I'm sure many of these have come up. Uh, there's been a public records request for some of the emails around the biennial. I know some of those emails are going to show like all of the questions that they've provided. Um, and heeding the call earlier for, for more transparency about the process, which I think came from you, Doris, we can think and be intentional about, you know, what of that we're sharing and how we're sharing it. Thank you. Thank you for answering. Yeah, thank you for the question. Oops. 
So again, any questions or comments, feel free to raise your Zoom hand, put something in the chat if you'd like. So there is a, a comment in the chat that I will, will read. I think it's from Rabib R. Um, if you'd like to unmute and share, please feel free to raise your hand and I can unmute you. And if not, I can read this comment. Okay. Hearing that white people should quote, be listened to end quote, without any mention of accountability or even acknowledgement for the marginalized folks involved is alarming. Where is the empathy for the oppressed? All I've heard from the community is the age old quote, that man referring to Jason is angry and crazy end quote, et cetera. The normal things that are said about BIPOC people that speak up against injustice, the focus is on their de demeanor, their appearance, their temperament, but never on the injustice itself. This is gaslighting. No mention of Jason getting death threats. No mention of Jason's memorial for indigenous lives lost vandalized. No mention of reaching out to the indigenous community for healing and reparations. We are on their land. They don't owe Hampshire County anything. The lack of diversity in this conversation is normal in 2021 America and as mentioned in Hampshire County, but the active effort to replace it with supremacy or or a show of force and neglect is dangerous. I am disappointed. Thank you for that comment. Again, invite questions or comments. Feel free to raise your Zoom hand or add anything to the chat and I'll read it out. Dan? Yeah, I'll uh, make this one really short, um, just to, but I really like the idea of thinking about the future. And one of the things that I would like to see um, is a plan to do outreach to different communities and groups. Um, one of the things I know it's hard <laughs> when you're operating under open meeting law and you only have you only meet once a month and it's at a set time, um, but thinking about what we could do to um, include other communities um, and making sure that we're hearing their voices um, when it comes to um, what the what the council is funding, what it's what's in, what it's encouraging, what it's looking for, um, what it's evaluating, all of those things, which are really complex, and I don't expect an answer tonight or even <laughs> um, in the next little while because these are deep questions when you really get to them, um, but. I look forward to seeing how you think about and how you proceed with outreach. Um, I think that's really important.
Sorry, my internet thing, Dan. Again, we are um, here to take comments and questions. Um, we're not directly responding to too many of the questions around the biennial right now because the work is still in progress, as mentioned. We are logging these questions to help guide our work. So if you have questions, comments, concerns regarding the biennial or any of our work um, at the Arts Council, do feel Well, I'm sorry, everyone, I keep cutting out. Um, if you have questions or comments, do please raise your Zoom hand or put them in the chat. I am also going to make my colleagues co-hosts in case I cut out again. Uh, so I think what's happening right now is that Danielle is no longer a host because she had to get off and come back on and I as a co host cannot make her a host. Um, so I think Pam is trying to make that happen. That's what's going on around here. I am back. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Wow, really uh, amazing. Uh, municipal meetings on zoom can be so wild. Um, I'm gonna make uh, my my fellow council members co-hosts if I can. I can't. So strange. But thank you, Pam. Thank you, uh, Dan and Jesse, for helping troubleshoot. If anyone has any questions, comments, concerns regarding the biennial or any of the Arts Council's work. Um, please do feel free to raise your Zoom hand or put something in um, 
in the chat. You can also always email us. Um, Okay, Ellen. This is just like arts council business, but it's um, probably a little beyond time for getting going on the poet laureate. Um, Karen's tenure is up in April. So just a just a reminder. Um, and I don't know. I I I don't. I haven't heard anything if, if that's if the work on that has started. Um, Karen mentioned it to me last week, and I had already been thinking about it. So, just to put a bee in your bonnet. Thank you, Ellen. We did advertise that public comment would run from 7.30 to 9 p.m. Um, I'm happy to stay on until 9 if, um, in case people join, but I, I would encourage if you're on the call and you plan to speak, you don't have to wait until, until 9. Um, Questions, comments, concerns regarding anything pertaining to the to the Arts Council um, would be great. Um, okay, I'm seeing something in the chat. So uh, thank you, Ya Ping. Ya Ping Douglas shares the following, um, which I'll read out. And it's also in the chat if you'd like to read along. I'd like to share a quote from Martin Luther King Jr. from Where Do We Go From Here? Chaos or Community? 1967, quote, whites, it must frankly be said, are not putting in a similar mass effort to re-educate themselves out of their racial ignorance. It is an aspect of their sense of superiority that the white people of America believe they have so little to learn, end quote. I hope that the white people who feel upset and defensive about the show cancellation can muster the courage and humility to switch, to switch gears and step out of superiority mode and into learning mode. Thank you, Yaping.
So there's a question from Doris. Can you share the Google Doc you're creating or will it be in minutes? Um, I think the link to the Google Doc, Jesse, is that, I, I think the, we didn't want to put it in the chat because it's in edit mode. Jesse, if you're able to put it in view mode, um, we can share it in the chat. It will also be part of our minutes. Um, so if there's like an urgency to wanting that, um, we can share it. We can see if there's a way to make the permissions such that we can put it in the chat. Otherwise, I'm just worried people might accidentally delete something. Um, but if not, then it will be part of our minutes. Um, I would also encourage if you would like, you can also take a screenshot of the questions if that if you just want to have them. Um, and this meeting is being recorded, so it will go on um, Northampton Open Media's YouTube uh, channel along with all of our other meetings. If folks just you know want to watch old meetings, they can be quite fun. Um, you can you can see all of this because of the share screen should come up in the recording. I think it'll come up in the recording. I hope so. Uh, thank you. And, and Jesse did just share um, the read only link in the um, in the chat. Questions, comments, concerns. This is the public comment portion of our meeting. Okay, we have something in the chat. So Kathy Service, who is on our ink board, uh, we have a comment from Kathy in the chat. Is it okay if I read that, or would you like sure. to? Speak? No, I mean you can, you can, you can speak. I just it, it's been been unsettling for me, so I just wanted to make that comment. So thank you. Do you, if, would you like to just okay. share? Well, I mean, I could, I mean, basically, you know, I, I, you know, first of all, I, I really want to acknowledge that, you know, I did not know what was going on, unfortunately, with Mr. Montgomery, with Jason, and, and that's wrong. You know, the violence is wrong. That shouldn't happen. Violence of any sort is wrong. And, um, and um, and what has happens to people who marginalize people and those of us who know me know I work with people who are marginalized in a different way with with intellectually so I I, I can appreciate all that so I don't say this I it's not to you know it's it's wrong the way that people are treated it really is and um and I don't wrong is almost like it's it's almost like too too um um light a word but. I, you know, that meeting on the 28th that happened that I, I, I was not at it, but I, I viewed afterwards, really the, the anger that was expressed really frightened me. And, and part of it comes from as a woman whose mother was sexually abused by her father and whose, whose mother herself was physically abused by her husband, all preceded by verbal anger, anger, anger. That's what that, that meeting, you know, the tone brought up in me. So it was really difficult for me to be a part, to kind of even listen in and then now to go back and to do minutes. So I just want to comment that in terms of women, you know, especially comments made with women named in the meeting, I just wanted to say that we have to kind of remember, you know, that violence and, and anger, even though I, I understand that, I totally get that. But, you know, to kind of how we have to kind of 
treat each other and or not even that way i mean there's just something in, in in a space like that and i you know i was glad that you read the equity you know the statements and stuff like that about how we conduct ourselves amongst each other so thanks for letting me express it but it, it's really it just has sat un, unhappily or not even happily unsettled in me so thanks thank you kathy So again, we are in the public comment portion of the Northampton Arts Council meeting. This is being recorded. We are open for comments, questions, concerns pertaining to the biennial or any other part of the work that the Arts Council does.
I appreciate that we have some quiet. And as we wait for folks to come up with comments and questions, people might still come to this meeting, people might still share. I'll just encourage us to use this as a rare opportunity to think and reflect. And some people have named discomfort, some people have named um, anger, some people have named hurt, some people have named um, many, many different emotions tonight, hope, excitement. Um, I, I invite you all to, to sit with those feelings, just as we wrote in, um, in our statement earlier, um, and take this as a rare opportunity to reflect. How does this impact our work to create um, arts and cultural experiences in our community? How could these feelings um, guide our thinking and guide our work moving forward? And of course, if you have questions, comments, or concerns pertaining to your reflection or any of the Arts Council work or the biennial, I invite you to raise your Zoom hand and unmute and share them. Um, and if not, then I'm fine with uh, having us just be here and be present with one another until others um, come to speak or until nine o'clock, whatever comes sooner. <laughs> Uh, Doris asks, where did the apology document come from? I may have missed that. So earlier in the meeting, for anyone who missed it, um, I shared uh, how to give a genuine apology framework, uh, which came from Kent Alexander. He is one of our council members who is not uh, with us on the call tonight. He is um, an equity facilitator by training and just suggested that as a board, we, we think about if we're going to make an apology, first thing we do is assess impact which as I mentioned earlier, we've been doing at all levels. Um, and this apology framework starts with that. Um, so this is from him. I don't know who wrote the document. I, I'll follow up with him to ask the source of the document, but I know that he uses it in um, interracism, justice and equity facilitation. Yeah, thank you for thank you for asking, Doris. Others might have missed that too.
Dan. Yeah, so um, I actually appreciate having like a little bit of quiet time to think. Um, and so one of the things as I'm reflecting here, I really want to say that I appreciate that you've taken the time um, to acknowledge the hurt that's happened all around and to many different people. Um, and that this is really bringing up deep conversations in the community. Um, but I also want to recognize that that hurt oftentimes comes from the status quo that is doing the same thing that we've always done because we have blinders on and we don't necessarily see the harm that we cause inadvertently with our actions and with the structures um, that we create that enable those. And so I want to say that I do appreciate that you took a moment to pause to reflect and that you stopped the show rather than allowing unintentional harm to go unacknowledged and that this is the first step in doing a lot of really hard work to align um, what your values and our values as a community are with the actions and the way that we present them and promote them. So I know that canceling the show is really hard. It affected the artists. It affected all of the volunteers who've done work beforehand. It affects our community, um, but it is a painful but just action. And it's the step in the right direction towards getting us to a place where we can say, we have done the hard work. We've had those conversations. We know what our processes are. We acknowledge that in the past they were difficult and now we can move forward. And so this is the hard work. It's the rough stuff. Um, and it requires so much of us, um, but it is what is required to make a space intentionally inclusive, um, intentionally representative and intentionally just. So I just wanted to say one last time, thank you so much for the work that you're all doing, the, it, like the conversations that you're engaged in, that you're facilitating, um, all of the things that are going to come up, not just tonight, but you know, in the coming months, in the coming years um, to really reshape what the Northampton Arts Council is and its contributions, aligning it and making sure that it's doing the work to be as anti-racist um, and as inclusive as possible. So thank you all. Thank you, Dan. So again, we are accepting comments, questions, concerns, ideas, even suggestions for um, the work that we do at Northampton Arts Council. If you have thoughts on the biennial, now is the time to, to share those or questions or concerns regarding the biennial and the cancellation. Please do feel free to um, raise your Zoom hand and I will unmute you. This is the November 9th um, Northampton Arts Council meeting.
for folks that are newly joined the call, um, this is the November 9th meeting of the Northampton Arts Council. We have been taking questions and comments and recording them in the Google Doc that is on shared screen. If anyone has questions, comments, concerns regarding the biennial, the process behind it, the cancellation of it, or any of our work, we do invite questions, comments, concerns. We are listening tonight, transcribing, and there will be a series of working group meetings in which we continue to um, evaluate community feedback and suggestions so that we can assess impact um, and come up with next steps. If you would like to speak, please do feel free to raise your Zoom hand, or um, if you don't wanna speak, you can drop something into the chat or email us. If you drop it into the chat, I can read it out for us all um, on the call. Um, if you email it to us, we will add it to this, this doc as we receive it. Hi, Yaping. Requested to unmute you. Hello. Um, hi, I, I just wanted to thank the Arts Council again for canceling the biennial show. And I wanted to affirm that that was the right decision. That was an anti-racist decision. Um, and I want to thank the Arts Council for taking a stand and um, going through with a decision that actually supports more artists of color and makes the arts more equitable and anti-racist in Northampton. And um, I think it's an amazing decision that opens up a lot more possibilities for how the arts in Northampton can be a force for anti-racism work and support anti-racism instead of a continued expression of a white supremacist status quo, which is what arts often are when they are um, curated and run by white people without a commitment to anti-racism work. So thank you, Arts Council. Um, and thank you for 
you know, having, um, doing your research to understand what systemic racism looks like in the arts and using that to guide your decisions, um, using an up-to-date understanding of systemic racism and oppression so that you are, um, you know, acknowledging that a colorblind lens is a racist lens to use for, for making decisions. So I, again, just want to thank you all for the amazing work you're doing and taking a stand despite um, getting a lot of backlash from, I think, a lot of people who haven't updated their understanding of what racism looks like in 2021. So thank you. Thank you, Yaping. So we are on the call until nine o'clock to hear questions, comments, concerns. Ideas and suggestions is, are welcome as well. Um, we're here to listen. So if you would like to share, please do feel free to raise your hand um, and then I will unmute you. Or if you don't feel comfortable speaking, feel free to add any comments, questions, concerns, ideas, ruminations to the chat and I can read them out for you. Um, so we do have a comment in the chat. Um, Alec Kesu, thank you for the phonetics in the in your Zoom name. Um, says I agree with Dan. I appreciate how thoughtful the Arts Council is being in its approach, thinking about learning and moving forward. Simply offering an opportunity to have this conversation and eliciting reflection is so valuable. I'm learning and growing from this discussion. Thank you.
So we will close the meeting at 9 p.m. There is still time if anyone would like to ask a question, make a comment, make any suggestions. You can do so by raising your hand on Zoom or writing something in the chat and I can read it out. So if you've been waiting and uh, need some encouragement, here it is. Um, we'd love to hear from you. If tonight's not the moment for you to speak, we're gonna have another meeting in a month. All of our um, agendas and Zoom links are posted on um, the city's website. Thanks to our wonderful city clerk who, who is here. Um, <laughs> thank you, Pam. Um, so you can you reflect and can come to our December meeting. You can also email us um, anytime. But if, if you would like to make a comment or ask a question, um, we've got about five minutes to do so. Just feel free to raise your Zoom hand or put something in the chat. Thank you. For folks who are just joining the call, this is the Northampton Arts Council meeting on November 9th. This meeting is being recorded. Um, this is the public comment period. So if you have any comments, questions, concerns that you would like to share with the council regarding the biennial, regarding any of our agenda items tonight or any of our work, um, please do feel free to raise your Zoom hand and I will unmute you, or you can put your um, your comments and thoughts into the chat and I can read them out. Shared on screen, we have questions, comments, concerns that have already been shared this evening. Um, and those will also be part of our minutes. So we do have a comment um, in the chat from Ya Ping Douglas. It reads, I think historic and national context is important for understanding the current conversation. This op-ed from June this year expresses some relevant points. 
op-ed, How Freedom of Speech is Weaponized to Fight Anti-Racism. And there is a link to um, an article from um, the LA Times. So we'll check that out. Thank you, Ya Ping. It's also in the um, questions doc. I know, too, too bad we only have two minutes left of the meeting. I could have read it out for everyone. I'm just kidding. <laughs> maybe the next meeting. <laughs> no, at the next meeting, we all can have read it and maybe do some discussion. So I will say, like, I'm going to put a last call in if anyone would like to make a comment, ask a question, voice a concern. Feel free to raise your hand on Zoom and I'll unmute you or add anything you'd like to the chat and I can read it out. If not, I will say thank you truly to all of you for being here. Um, we appreciate your questions. We appreciate your, your comments, your concerns. As I mentioned at the top of the meeting, we are um, undergoing an assessment period to evaluate the impact of our process, um, all of our work within the council, um, assess the impact of the cancellation and assess the impact of our communication since then. Thank you, Doris. Um, and um, you'll be hearing from us about next steps, steps as we as we know what they are. Um, I, I did say we're we're being slow and intentional about this work for a reason. We do not want to repeat the same mistakes that we think were made that many of you have pointed out on all sides, right? And I just wanna reiterate that within the council, we are having um, conversations that really mirror the, the conversations that are happening in our community. And as Ya Ping points out, that are mirroring the conversations that are happening um, within the national context, particularly within arts and culture um, and, and the ways in which arts and culture rub up against anti-racism work. So um, we thank you for your, your support of that process um, and your willingness to be here and your willingness to, to listen and, and join us in the work. Um, with that, um, it is nine o'clock. I'm wondering if any council members would like to make a motion to close the meeting. I will motion to close the meeting. Will anyone second that? I will second that. Okay, all in favor? Looks like all of us, great. Okay, so the meeting is adjourned at 9.01 p.m. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you, Pam, our city clerk, for helping facilitate this meeting and facilitate our agenda in Brian's absence. And thank you, everyone, for, for coming tonight. Really grateful to you. Thanks, Danielle, and everyone else.